This is The Close-Up, conversations about creativity. From our studios in Los Angeles, here is Jim Chabin. Welcome back. Wim Bynes is here. He is the Senior Vice President, General Manager of Entertainment and Corporate for Barco. In that role, he oversees global strategy and new business, and it's based in the Netherlands. We have wanted to talk to you for some time. Thank you for being in Los Angeles. Happy to be here. Uh, you have a remarkable view. You travel the world, you lead uh, the top teams at Barco, a major technology company. Uh, when, when you get off the plane or when you go to a marketplace and you hear what's happening, what's happening with media? What are consumers doing? What kind of transition are we in? It's an interesting question, you know. I think that um, the first thing what I try to do when I get off the plane is typically try to see my, my customers, right? And what I mean is trying to, to see what the end users are seeing. So, so typically I, I, I spend a lot of time in a cinema also just to see what, how does the customer experience it. And the interesting thing for me is there's a lot of things which are global. There's a lot of things which are, I think, parallels between if I'm in Europe, in the States, or in China, Mexico. But at the same token, I see differences, right? I mean, the, the as an example, the, the, the price for a ticket, a cinema ticket, is very different, right? So the consumer behavior in that sense is different, depending where you are in the world. Even the, the technology is the same and it's a similar price. The other thing we see is that some markets are really growing, right? So China, we see an incredibly growth, box office-wise, screens. Um, so a very young uh, audience, very hungry for, for new content. Um, we see much more mature market in, into North America. So, so every market has its own specialty, um, but in the end, it's a very global market. Do you notice that whether it's concerts and Madonna, mm -hmm. or U2, uh, or it's Star Wars the movie, that the venue and the industries are realizing that consumers have to continually be uh, wowed with ever-increasing uh, I experiences so that if we think it's just the movie business, it's not. It's the, yeah. it's the concert music as well. It's, it's all of this, uh, the consumers demanding more? I think so. I mean, uh, I was uh, a few months ago um, in uh, Tomorrowland, right, talking about events, right? Tomorrowland, is it, it's one of the, the new, uh, I think, um, uh, let's say, ways of consuming an, an event, right? It, it's about, um, um, it, it's, it started up in, in Belgium, of all places for that matter. But they have created it out of, they, they have just taken an old area, which is, which is a huge area, which they turned into a Tomorrowland thing. And they have six concerts going in parallel. And their main stage, they have 60 to 70,000 people in that, you know, on that stage, right? So I was present there a few months ago. And so people travel all over the world just to come there, right? Because being there is so unique. It is like creating a moment, right? And, and, and it's something they will always remember. And that, I think, is, um, that's what people are looking for. So I was talking with people coming from Japan, coming from Canada, coming from all places, going there and spent their two, three days because they want to be part of that. They want to have saying, hey, we've been there. And then you find it also on the social media. That, I think, is more uh, stronger than it used to be. So I think that's what I mean by people are more hungry for that. Right. So we have to, um, I think, be conscious that that's a trend. I, People do not get uh, easily excited to come out of their chair for just doing, going to a movie or just going to something. So they want it to be something special. Now, that does not mean for me that it only can be in a few places in the world. It's up to us, I think, to figure out how we can bring that to the mass in a broader way. And I think that that's really where Barco then tries to, besides having the ultimate experience aspect, but also make sure that many viewers can, can enjoy that. You are in a position where you see all of the latest and the best uh, technology. Your company's involved in making a great deal of it. And if we talk about movies first, high frame rate, high dynamic range, um, uh, and all of the immersive sound, 3D. Uh, you have Barco Escape, which we've got another uh, program that we talked to your right. associates about. Which one of these technologies do you say, okay, these are the ones that I'm excited about? Yeah, let me, let me Go one step back, if I may, and give you an yeah. answer on that, Jim, because I think it's important. The way Barker looks at this, we look at how can we fulfill the whole chain, right? Not just look at, at one element of that. And let me give an example. As an example, the creatives, right? The, the people who make the movies. We don't make movies as Barker, right? So, so, so we give tools to the creatives. We give them abilities and tools means technology for them to have a creative intent which they can maximize to their, to their own, uh, let's say, uh, leisure, right? That, that's a goal we have there. If I think about the exhibitors, which is a big part of our customer base, we want to make sure two things, that every time when we bring a new trend or product along, 
that the customer experience gets enhanced or that what we call the return of investment means that, that you know, they're going to get the return of what they've invested in uh, is lowered, right? So, so, and in order for them to be stay profitable in their movie business. So the element for me of saying one of those different technologies, and we all engage in all of them because, and I all love them, it's, it's getting a better picture on the screen. But in the end, the consumer needs to like it. When, when we as an industry say we've got a new term and that's, you know, we think is great, but the consumer doesn't see it, doesn't feel it, I think we missed the point. Um, so I think we have to think about how to package that and how to make sure that the consumer says, wow, this is where I come back for. In Los Angeles, if someone recommends a movie to you, they almost say, see it at the Chinese theater in Hollywood uh, on the IMAX screen. It is, it's an incredible movie. Right. And I'm struck with, I don't think they know why that movie theater uh, is the way you, they want you to see this movie and it's where they saw it. And yet, as I researched, I understand there are two Barco laser projectors that project a brilliant amount of light in 3D onto that screen. What are those elements do you think have got to be there so that people walk out saying, I can't get this at home. I can't watch this on my flat screen. I'm in the business of emotion, I always say. It's about when people go to an event, when they watch a movie, it's about the whole uh, experience. One of the things we're very keen on is when you, when you go to the theater, it already starts by selecting on the web page, right? When you go to the theater, you want to be, it's your, it's your night out, right? You want to be uh, excited, you want to be um, feeling good about it, you want to get great service and all those things. So it already starts there. So you, you mentioned the, the Chinese theater. It's a mythical place, right? So, so the theater is great. It looks, you know, you feel special when you come in there. Then, then we have, you know, together with IMAX, so, so we have put in two laser projectors there, which, which does one hell of a job, right, of, of getting a huge amount of, let's say, light, but also contrast, get, get a beautiful picture there. Now, we can get in all the details of how brilliant that picture is, but in the end, the consumer, you know, when, when he feels I'm treated special and it has in a special setting, he will come back to that. And a couple of ingredients have to be there, right? I mean, the, the size of the screen does matter, by the way. Uh, or, and that means how, how close it is to the screen depending on the size. The fact that, that the picture quality is good, that it's, that it's light, right? The fact that the seating is, is important, right? The whole environment of getting into the theater easily in, getting into the theater easy out, right? All those things are important elements of the enjoyment when, when he has an evening out. So I think even though I would love them to say the Barker projector makes one hell of a difference, I do know it makes a difference for the technology persons because they know what we can do different than other people. But for the consumer in the end, it is a sum of it all. And I think what Barco has really looked at, together with our customers, by the way, is how can we embrace the sum of this and create that the customer comes back to the cinema? Because yes, I want him to get out of his chair and not sitting in front of his television, but go to the movie theater, because I do believe that that's where the emotional experience is going to be very much enhanced compared to being at home. And I'm talking about 80%, right? And so we want him to go out. But I also want him as much to go out to, let's say, his local theater as he goes up to the, you know, the Chinese mm -hmm. theater like you mentioned. Right. Because, um, because it's part of how do we bring that, that average level up to everybody, but right. we still then have the specials. Right. So we, we know the, the top 10% is yes. going to be a premium content. Absolutely. But we yes. have to raise the other 90% of we do. quality in the local cinema. So Alan Horn, uh, chairman of Disney, said recently at an event I attended, he said, I only ask two questions before I approve a movie for production at Disney. A, do I have to see it in a movie theater? Yes. And do I want to see it now? Yes. If it's something I can say, I'll wait and watch it on Netflix, yep. that's not what I want to hear. If it's got to be seen in a movie theater and it's got to be seen now, that's what I'm interested in. So your job as the magicians behind the screen that make all of this Star Wars technology look great um, is to make sure that 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 experience for the consumer, no matter where they see it, yeah. is so strong that when the next movie comes out, they say, I'm, let's go to the movies this weekend and see it. Absolutely. I yeah. think that what, what we see is, and again, it's slightly different across the world, right? But, but you see the premium experience. We, we talk about the, the large uh, format screens. I mean, you have the IMAXs of the world. I mean, we come up with Barco Escape, right, to get the more uh, immersive experience are all, for me, ways of, of differentiating something to the customer, to the consumer, to say, hey, we have this, this premium way of watching it. At the same token, when I go to China, we're trying to get into the rural areas in China, which we talk about the tier three, four, five cities in China, where you want to be able to you know, bring projectors in which was never there before. So there you want to make sure that the consumers can consume and can get, get those movies and also see the Hollywood movies or the other movies there. And so I think it is, 
it is both directions are important. So I, I do agree that the people want to get excited and want to have their, their chair moving, want to have this escape immersive experience, or want to have this big eye mixing. You want to allow them to have that. At the same token, you want to make sure that, that people can see Star Wars in the rural area into China, right? And, and so this is where the, the two angles where we strive on as a company, because for this industry, I do believe it's important that we get people to that theater. And we get that when we bring a quality level there. Now, if it is with HDR, if it is with higher frame rate, is it with 3D? All of those technologies we love and we embrace, um, but in the end, he needs to say, I want to go there. And I think that that is really what, what our duty is, and that is very different, I believe, than, than 20 years ago when people just, a movie, you just go to the theater. Today, they don't have to. I right. mean, Netflix is pretty convenient. Right. I mean, so, so if we talk about mo movie markets, the U.S. is dominated, then Europe, then China. Now China has moved uh, in that order. China is now number two, is geared to take over. How, uh, when was your first trip to China? Well, you know, I had the pleasure of, uh, I mean, it's, it's almost yeah, 15, 17 years ago was right. my first trip to China. Right. And that was, I wasn't working for Barker at the time, but, but China was a, a very different place at that time. Right. I mean, you know, when you get out of the plane, you know, the, the, you see the, the people with, with the bicycles, you know, yes. with, you know, fully all loaded with, with all kind of stuff. They're moving from A to B, right? Right. When I go today to China, last couple of years, right? The car park I see when I go out, it, it is as new as any place right. in the BM world, right? BMWs, Absolutely, Volvos, right? and Buicks. And it's the extended mm -hmm. BMWs and, and, right. the, and the Mercedes and so on. Right. So in that extent, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been an enormous amount of evolution, I would say. I mean, if I look at the last eight years, which has been my time with Barco and being in the cinema space uh, for Barco, it's been, um, just to give an idea, 2010 as an example, there were around 6,000 screens uh, in China. And, and as a benchmark, there are 38,000 movie screens That's in right. the United States, basically? That's right. There are okay. 38,000 in the States. It's a good point. So in 2010, it was 6,000. Right now, we're going to reach over 29,000, right? Uh, which is end of 2015 uh, in China, right? So it almost five times, you know, multiplied by five in, in around five years. Now, they expect, and there's an expectation, that's around, you know, 5,000 screens per year, that for the next five years, it's going to double, right? So they're going to get close to 55,000 in 2020. Now, if you look at the amount of people there, the amount of potential consumers, those mm -hmm. numbers still look small. But if you look at how fast they have been able to develop that, that that's amazing. But it's 1.3 billion people that's my who point, are potential yes. movie ticket buyers. You have right. two factories? In, yes. In, in your 65% uh, of the movie projectors put into cinemas in China are Barco. Yes, that's uh, correct. Movies have been very, very successful in China. It's an industry that's very, very successful. Is that because the the government has deemed it important. What, what are the factors that have made this movie business grow so strong that what you're saying is probably 2018 or 19, it's going to eclipse the United States as the biggest movie market in the world? You know, to be expected, right? The box office, I mean, year on year, if you look at the first half of this year compared to last year, it grew 50%, right? So, so box office this year will, will be around, I think, tipping around six billion. I think US last year was 10 billion, so, so there's still a difference there. Um, but, uh, but the growth in that is, is, is tremendous. Now, your point, Jim, is about um, why is it important for China? I think what China has is um, China has what they call their five-year plan, right? So the government makes a five-year plan. I think it was the 13th five-year plan where they, they set up big lines for how they want the next five years, the industry to evolve. In the last uh, five-year plan, and the next five-year plan is to come uh, uh, coming uh, next year, they have uh, laid out that, that cinema or better culture and, and the digital aspect of that was a priority, right? And that means that, that they align by that the industry uh, in order to focus on that. So why is it important? I think culture is important, right? China, um, I think it's, it's amazing. It's, it's uh, for me, uh, remarkable how it's evolved, but also how it's evolved in what I would call a controlled way, right? Because with an expansion, which we would call an explosion in many regions, in a very short time, um, Still keeping it controlled is, is tremendous. I mean, uh, I think uh, remarkable and, and a lot of respect for that. But in that five-year plan, they give a direction. Now, many things are on there, like infrastructure. They invest a lot in infrastructure. But cinema, or let's say culture, was also on the agenda. So that's why uh, you will see China being very much focused on that. Now, the Chinese government is, is very eager because one thing is the Hollywood movies where, where some of them, not all of them, but some of them, and, and more and more are coming into China. But there's also a very big interest of the Chinese government of, of increasing their own local, uh, I would say, content generation, right? So making movies in China. 
And that's why you see recently a lot of collaborations between Hollywood studios and China studios and making movies together. Because I think there's a big movie business uh, in building movies. And then um, there is, uh, of course, a huge amount of vast potential of consumers. It's that combination, I think, which makes it attractive. The other thing is that it is, it is cool, right? It is hot, right? It is, it is watching a movie uh, being in China from, um, from made in Hollywood is cool, right? So people want to be that. The, the, the young generation want to see that, right? They want to they wanna experience that. And because it's much more, um, they, they can get much closer to it than they used to. Before it was something very far away. Today it's closer to them. Um, I and mean, it's affordable. It's affordable. Right. But also the, the, all the things they see on the set there um, is things they can buy, right? Um, where, where probably 10, 15 years ago, it was so far away from what they could afford. So I think that, that consuming cinema is something they very much enjoy. Um, the trend of 3D, hugely in China, right? A huge uh, 3D trend. I mean, uh, all movies in 3D are doing fantastically Guardians well. Guardians of the Galaxy, 95% of the tickets for Jurassic World in China Absolutely. were 3D tickets. Titanic, right, which was, you know, we brought out in 3D, you know, in China, right, was tremendous. So, so I mean, I it's true. So I think that they, they're very hungry for new technology, which is a general trend. The Chinese like new technology. That's where 3D, but also new things like laser, another thing we talk about. But, but that improved picture, that, that massive picture, that, that, that experience, if it's now Barker Escape or it's other experiences, they're really very hungry for that. What is going to the movies going to be like in 10 years? I mean, what, what are the trends that you will be watching to say, these are the kinds of things we're going to have to implement so that going out to a movie theater is your absolute favorite choice as opposed to staying home and watching something on Netflix? What, where do you see this all going? First of all, we have said as Barco that we want to make sure that there's a massive amount of cinemas out there also in 10 years from now. Many companies which are you know, in the space I am saying it's not going to be, right? So, so that's the first thing. You first have to put your vision out there that that's part of our aspiration, right? Now, the next thing is how do we make that happen? I think that um, if the cinema industry um, has, has only the premium large screens uh, left kind of thing, we're going to be a very different industry, right? And the question is that we believe that that, that, that emotional experience, m watching a movie, if you, if you, if you take your Star Wars, you have to see that, that has to pop up the screen, right? You have to see it in the big screen, you have to be in that movie. That, I think, is an emotion which we share very much with Inside Barco. And that, I think, is tough to get into, into the home. Now, I believe the Netflixes and so on, you're gonna, the, 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 the second time, the third time you watch a movie, you know, could very well be at home with, with, with people and uh, other people with it. But the first time you wanna see it, it has to pop off, you know? I don't wanna see a movie into an airplane either, right? For the same reason, because the screen doesn't really justify right. the movie there. So I think that, that putting up the ambition first. Now, how do we make it happen? I think we, we touched a little bit on it. It's, it's that experience has to be unique. We have to, first of all, we need to make sure that this industry stays profitable. The exhibitors have to be able to make money because otherwise they're not going to invest in new technology. So we have to make it affordable for them to embrace new technology. And that new technology needs to be cutthroat enough in the sense that the consumer say, wow, this is cool, this is hot, this is what I want. Right, right. And so, and be aware that our consumers is, is into an, you know, age bracket, which is different than, than many of the decision makers in this industry. So, I, you know, we need to transport this a little bit to, you know, between 15, 25, 30 years old. That's many of the people sitting in, in the movies today. Right, right. And so what is attracting them? So I think staying relevant is embracing those new technologies, but it's pushing, right? It's pushing the picture quality, but immersive sound, what you said, but it's when I go in the convenience, right? Uh, in the whole lobby, I want to have this, this theme park experience when I go, when I park my car, getting in the lobby, it doesn't should take too much time. I don't want to stand in the queue. All those different aspects is about going out there. Convenience is a big thing, right? I mean, this in, in the United States, convenience is very big, I would say, if you look globally. Right. It's probably one of the most advanced ways. But, but so they want to consume that movie, but, but it has to be at their fingertips. And convenience also means it has to be in the vicinity. So people today will drive further, uh, you know, 30, 50 miles to go to this special premium experience. And I think they will do that for the Star Wars of the world. That will definitely be the case. But for the other movies and, and many other movies, they will just say, what's in the vicinity, right? It's only 10 minutes drive and that's right. where I'm going to go. Right. And I think we need to make sure that that whole industry stays not only relevant, but being able to, to embrace that. When the technology you have at home is more advanced than we get in the movie theater, yes. we're missing the point. Right. And so we have a duty to, to bring that new technology and to make it affordable. That's where we see our role but also to focus on the fact that what we bake is not just another gimmick, but it's something where the, the, the users say, great, right? I mean, you mentioned Barco Escape and it's just one element, but 
when people leave and they've seen the side screens coming in and they've seen it opening up, you know, the picture on that, they say, wow, right? And I see it on Facebook, what, you know, the comments they make. That kind of thing we need to have when they watch that movie, it has to be that wow effect. And I think it sits in many small things. It's not just on technology side, it's one element. And, and, but it's also the exhibitor has a big role to play. Uh, I think the studios, the content creators have a role to play. And I think what we're trying to do is partner up with the community, with the ecosystem, and make sure we're all very focused on, on driving that extra kind of, of experience, that extra you know, thing that, that the customer says, wow, um, every time when we show it. So every movie is important. There's not just one of them during the year. I took two teenagers to see Barco Escape last, last week uh, for Maze Runner. They were both on their iPhones yes. sitting with their popcorn in the theater, talking yeah. to friends, texting, who knows what they were doing. They turned them off for the movie, but you, and the escape came on, and by the way, they thought it was very cool, uh, but you have this sense of saying, these are highly sophisticated 12-year-old kids. Yes. You and I were a part of a conversation at Paramount yesterday about virtual reality, uh, and it seems to be in the uh, initial stages. Uh, where do you see the practical applications of, of virtual reality, kind of beyond the hype that we're all reading about? I think that, that the, um, the point you're making is, an, and the mobile phone is a good example, right? Um, the, we need to embrace mobile phones in cinemas, right? Whatever that means. That's why we do believe that pre-shows should be interactive. That's one of the areas where Barco also invest in, in to make interactivity into, for instance, the pre-show. So, so instead of pushing it away or then watching it while we're showing content, we make sure they can interact with that. I think that's one tendency. Now, the point you mentioned is about virtual reality. I mean, as a company, we, we are already a lot in, in augmented reality, um, leading into virtual reality, right? The, the visualization technology is there, uh, being used into also the, um, not just in the entertainment world, but also into the automotive world, into the uh, fast moving consumer world. How would it work in the automotive world? Yeah, let me, so right now the automotive world, there's, there's a big tendency to what they call to create these virtual um, showrooms, right? So today, if you look at it, I was talking with one of the executives the other day, and, and he was telling me that today his customers comes, when they visit the shop, it's 1.2 times, 1.3 times they visit the shop. So they it come once to decide whether they're gonna buy a car. That's right. Okay. Where it was four years ago, it was three, three to four times they came. Okay. So that means that when somebody comes in and he leaves again and he doesn't buy, you lost him, right? Now, at the same token, and, and people are much more, uh, I would say, um, advanced in the sense they're much more I wouldn't say trained, but, but prepared, right? So they have done the internet search, they have done the configurator, all those things. So they know exactly roughly what they want kind of thing. They want to test it, they want to feel it and those things. What the automotive uh, want to do is in the, in the end, they would like to have the car you want that you can feel it, that you can touch it. Now, that would be so much real estate they have to put out there, so much working capital, not realistic. So they see the virtual kind of showroom where you go in and you get immersed into the car you want, right? So you're gonna see the car, you're gonna feel the car, you're gonna touch the car, which is your car, and you're gonna configure it there, different than whatever car they have standing there. So it is much more virtual, so that means that the, the whole virtual kind of environment will be very strong in and that. And you can buy the car. And you can buy the car you want. Right and I've there. said, I've yeah, seen yeah. it. I wanted to have this type of car. It was even in that color with that interior seating. I've, you know, I've been able to feel this, the steering. And it, it's, it's um, knowing that, for instance, the buying behavior in cars is, is smashing the door is a big part of the buying behavior, right? Because when you get into a showroom, what you do, you sit in the car, you smash the door, you take another car, you smash. That is feeling, hmm, it feels like a good car, right? Funk, yeah, That's yeah, right. it makes you feel good. That's where there's so much sound design into cars, into the doors these days. Um, but, but I think that, that the whole idea of the people are willing to get their personalized uh, consumer interest, that's what they want, they want to have their car but they're willing to take it in a virtual space because they know that you can't have all those cars standing there. Now that tendency is a consumer behavior, which we also will see across in, in many other industries. Now, virtual reality also into the entertainment space, more closer to, to the topic here today, I think it is, it is a trend. It's, 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 it's the next thing to come. But at the same token, it is in this infinite stage, right? It's in the beginning stage, so we have to give it time to grow. I mean, let the creatives do the crazy stuff let us come up with something, let us try things out. This is not yet into a maturity stage, right? So if we take, you know, our uh, graph of maturity and where we are on the chasm, we're still very much before the chasm, right? Kind Early of the, hype, the hype curve. That's right. right? So, so it's so going to be the technology freaks, if I may say, who's gonna, is going to uh, want to embrace this. But from the entertainment, let me be rest assured that this is a trend that's going to come. Because uh, the young kids, I mean, watching the iPads, they want to have now, if it's with glasses on their head or it's other kind of immersive visualization techniques, you know, we will decide or let's say the industry will have to decide on that, but they're going to move into that. So 
Gaming is going to be hot for me on this one, absolutely. Uh, but I think also into the theoretical direction, that there's going to be some element of that, but it will take time. So I think we have to be very close to that. I think we have to embrace it, but we also have to not, I wouldn't bet my company on it yet, um, but at the same token, I, I don't want to miss the trend, right? And, and so it's an important trend of how do you get more immersed? If you think about what we try to do with Barco Escape, it, it doesn't come just out of the blue, right? It, it fits into the eye angle of virtual reality, right? It fits in the fact that you want to see 200 degrees kind of thing angle. Um, this is where, where people want to, you want to watch broader than, you, than, than just the rectangle you used to have before you. And so uh, why? Because your eyes just allow that, right? My ears allow to get a better immersive experience. So I want to have being immersive experience in that. So that, that ten tendency, that trend is definitely there. And I think virtual reality is absolutely there to watch. Um, but we need, to, we need to give it time to grow. We need it's to give it a chance. It's going to take a while. Yes. Uh, your role at Barco is really to manage change, to see where the market's going and make sure Barco is in an appropriate place. Uh, and you hire a lot of people. When you look for an executive or someone that you want to bring onto your team, what are the qualities that you think are essential to be successful in this kind of environment? What, what, do, what do you look for? That's a, that's a good question. I think that um, I always say my job is, is um, I'm, I'm only one man in, 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 a, in a big organization, right? I mean, Barclay as a whole is 3,400 people. It's you know medium-sized company, but it means that, that I can do very little, right? The thing what I can do is, is, is coaching people and, uh, and allowing people to perform, I, I, I like to call it. And so I think that the, the, the people element, uh, if I look at Barco and I look at the, the last couple of years, what we have, to do, have, have been able to do as our full executive team is been able to attract um, great talent. But we've been also very keen on that people, you know, that, that they, they, they fit into the Barco culture and to believe to have that potential, right? And that potential for me has to be that, that people are willing to, um, what should I say, uh, fight against mediocrity, uh, being able to be challenged, being able to, um, um, to, to think out of the box, right? Uh, being uncomfortable about that, uh, push the boundaries in that. But at the same time, um, the Barco is a family, right? We talk about Barconians inter internal in Barco. We're also very proud about it is, it is we take care of each other. Um, but, but being part of the team means that we want you to excel but in a way that, that it is still in, in, in a family kind of environment. And so I think that um, people which are willing to perform and willing to, to bring their own passion into what they do, that's what I'm looking for. If people are not passionate, but they have all the credentials, that's why GV, uh, CVs for me is, is a limited kind of value, I always say. But talking with people and feeling the internal drive to want to make a difference, that's what it's all about. You talk about talent, uh, and it's an ethereal term. But when you are having these conversations, you put the CVs aside and you're engaging to see the chemistry and the thought processes. Uh, and you leave a, a, a room saying, talented person, I like this woman or this man. Um, describe talent. What is that, what is that uh, chemistry? What is that thing that makes you um, uh, warm up to a, a candidate saying, I think they'd be an asset to my company? It, it's, um, it, it's not one thing, right? When I say about Talent, I mean, I trust people when, they, when I see them, they typically have talent, otherwise I don't see them, right? Because they already get screened in the organization kind of thing. But, but I, I make a point, and I had a, a candidate uh, the other week, right? And he had seen eight people of the company, right? And, and, and so I said, I make a pride of that you see many people because I don't want you to be surprised, and I want you to be eyes open, right? About all the things we have and don't have. And I want you to see multiple people where you feel like, okay, I, I, I start learning the family, I start understanding the family and the way we do business. So I think people who can adapt, people who you can say, um, you know, when something, I, I like to use the, the, the metaphor I always say to my team is, when you look in the mirror in the morning and you don't like what you see, don't change the mirror. The pleasing thing is not my thing. It's about being able to be honest about it. And the custom is a fundamental part, right? When, when I'm in an interview and I don't hear several times the customer in that interview, I get very concerned and it can be internal, external, but the only reason why we are in the business is because a customer wants to buy my product. And why does he want to buy my product? Because I got people bringing it to him and the product has to be great. But to be honest, you can copy products, you can you know, get close on the product side, but the people side and the culture side, they can't copy for me that easy. We've heard the revolution, we've heard the digital revolution, we've heard these things before. Yeah. Do you think there's something to the fact that there is something special about this time this period of years right now that will change everything and is changing everything 
and therefore virtually everybody has got to be focused on it? Yeah, I, I would uh, phrase it in a slightly different way, right? When we moved into this, the, the movie industry from an, let me call it a more analog way to a more digital way, we went up to a staircase which runs very fast. And that means that the next innovation is going to be on the corner, and, and the next one around the corner, and the next one around the corner. So we're going to be in a roller coaster, but it's a positive roller coaster from my point of view, but it's a roller coaster of new things coming up. And constantly we have to, to change on that. It took 10, 15 years to move from analog to digital, right, as an industry. And, and, and some people, even a few years before it really br broke through, and, and Avatar was a very important one on 3D, but also on the digitization, people still said, no, 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 it's not going to happen because we are not like this as an industry. Um, that's going to be tough, right, to live tomorrow. So I think that it's for me not a question of a digital change, like now everything changes, but the constant keep on changing rate, uh, and that's going to be more than comfortable. That's going to be more than we're used to. And that I fully, fully agree on. And so in that extent, yes, it, the, the rate of change, which, by the way, the young generation is much quicker than we are, of embracing that. But we as an industry will have to embrace that because they love entertainment. They love to consume entertainment. And that's, that's what's so key in, in the success we're going to So get used to being uncomfortable with the speed with which you have to, uh, I have to, to say act that and compete. I think so. I think yeah. so. And, that, yeah. and that's going to be, you know, we're not in the consumer space as such, right? The, the, we, we are into the, the business to business space, if you take, and, and so on. But, but it's the consumer space which is rapidly evolving. And now by being in the digital age with this one, we're also going to be much more on that pace of, of changes. And so that's why I think you always have to think about the whole ecosystem. You have to make sure the creatives can be doing what they want to do, but, but the exhibitors has to be making money. Uh, the consumer has to find a, a better experience. It's a sum of it. You can't just sit in one corner and just you know, uh, be there. And, and, and that the companies who can really play on that ecosystem and are willing to embrace that ecosystem, that's going to be the winners of tomorrow, I think. Well, as you uh, travel the world and meet and see these new technologies and tour factories and listen to consumers, uh, keep those memories and agree to come back and talk to us about what you see in the world at large. But thank you so much happy, for being happy here. Happy to do. Thank it's you, great. Jim. Thank you. The Close Up is produced by the Advanced Imaging Society in Hollywood and powered by Barcode.